Hi, my name is Xu Ruiyang from Taiwan University. I am going to present our paper, Meta Learning for End-to-End -end Low Resource Speech Recognition. I'll start with the introduction and motivation of Meta Learning, then talk about how we apply Meta Learning in speech recognition, and finally demonstrate some initial experimental results. So let's start. Meta Learning or learning to learn is a general learning ability to make the model can learn fast and well. With such ability, the model can use less data but get better results. And here is a comparison with meta learning and supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have a dataset D contains a bunch of pairs of X and Y. Then we train a model M parameterized by theta that can receive X as input that output the prediction of y. In contrast, in meta learning, we have a data set of data sets. Now we have d1 to dk, each ti means one data set. Then we can train a meta model, capital M, that can receive data set d as input, then output the needed parameters. In general, each d is not so large, it will be in few shot or low resource case. Um, let's go back to the goal of meta learning. We want to utilize set of tasks d1 to dk to achieve fast adaptation on unseen task dt, which we are interested in. And the assumption is that we assume that tasks are inherently related, so it will be beneficial if we can transfer some knowledge between tasks. And just like supervised learning have two stages, which is train and test, Meta learning also have two stages, and I call it as meta train and meta test. Let's look at meta train first. In meta train, we want to use dataset D1 to DK to get a meta model capital M. And inside the meta train, for each dataset DK, we still have two stages, which is train and test. And I call the train stage in meta train as inner loop learn and the test stage in meta train as inner loop test. And when it comes to meta test, it's corresponding to the process of input the dataset dt, the unseen dataset, to get the parameters theta. And actually, it's just like the supervised learning we knew before. But the difference is that during the train stage in meta test, we will use some knowledge from meta model to learn the theta. And I call this process as adaptation. Then after adaptation, we can use the adapted, we can use the adapted parameters theta to evaluate the final performance. Now you might have some questions. So what we may have learned for? We can formalize the application of meta learning research as meta learn X to improve learn Y. And X is knowledge which is beneficial for adaptation during meta test. Or more intuitively, is something people need to decide in supervised learning algorithm. But now we use meta learning methods to automatically to decide that. And here I just list some um, possible candidates. And why is the application? For example, um, computer vision and reinforcement learning. And in recent years, since 2018, people started to apply meta learning in speech and language processing. For example, machine translation, dialogue generation, and even speaker adaptive training. So the next question is, how can I split the original dataset into different sub datasets, or say different tasks? And it depends on your application. For example, in speaker adaptive training, we can view different speakers' corpora as different datasets. And in multilingual machine translation, we can view different language parallel data as different tasks, so on and so forth. And in this work, we may have learned initial parameters to improve learn and to learn speech recognition, and we view different languages as different tasks. So now we have two questions. First, how to may have learned initial parameters? We adopt a gradient-based meta learning algorithm called Model Agnostic Meta, meta Learning also known as MAMO, to address this issue. Second, why we choose end-to-end -end speech recognition as application? And the answer is, 
Although Antrim model is easier for deployment, it's voracious for training data, and for most languages in the world, it's costly to build large enough corpus for each day for for each of them. That is, we only have low resource version, so it's aligned with the with the goal of machine learning, fast adaptation on on sync task, and in this case, it's on sync language. The next few slides. I'll briefly explain what is MAMO and some intuition behind that, then demonstrate how to apply MAMO in speech recognition. The goal of MAMO is almost the same as pre previously mentioned machine learning, but more specifically, it limits the adaptation process as stochastic gradient descent. So in brief, we want to learn a good initial parameter theta star such that performing few gradient steps from theta star can achieve loss minima during meta tests. And here's how we apply MAMO's idea into speech recognition. Let's look at the objective first. Um, we want to find the data that is good for individual language after in a loop learn. So I use data prime here. And for simplicity, I use one gradient step as in a loop learn. So theta prime can be obtained through this equation. And LD is a loss calculated on D, and it will be used in inner loop test. So let's go back to see the objective again. That means we want to find the parameters that is good after inner loop learn on inner loop test. And after the whole meta train process, we then use the theta star to adapt on DT. You might wonder, hey, doesn't it sound like multilingual transfer learning, right? In multilingual transfer learning, we also have two stages. The first stage is retraining. It will use multilingual corpora to find good initialization for adaptation. Then the second stage is adaptation. We will use the obtained initialization to fine tune on target language. And yes, actually, we can view the pre-training stage as meta train in MAMO and fine tuning stage as meta test. But there are still a little difference. Let's look at the objective in multi-text training first, oh, and I call it as multi-ASR. And this objective is a summation of the losses of individual languages. And unlike multi-ASR, here we just directly evaluate the loss on theta, rather than theta prime. So it doesn't consider the inner loop learn process. And after the whole process, after the whole pre-training process, we will use the theta star to adapt on DT. And in next few, in next two slides, I'll show the difference between these two objectives. Let's look at meta ASR first. Again, in meta ASR, we don't directly evaluate theta's performance for each language. Instead, we look at its potential. Therefore, we allow it to perform in the loop learn for each language then use the corresponding theta prime to decide its performance. So in this example, maybe the loss on theta here is not good for D1 and D2, but since it can achieve to the value of each loss curves, we will view this as good theta. In contrast, in multi-ASR, which will just evaluate the performance of theta on all loss curves, and it's equivalent to find the minima is equivalent to find the minimum of the superposition of the lowest curves without considering its further potential. Therefore, based on the illustration, we think that since meta ESR consider adaptation process in its objective, and our final goal is one to adapt on the target language. So meta ESR somehow make the training and testing scenario more aligned and might get better results than previous multi-test training methods. And we use the following two matrices to evaluate its benefits. The first is overall performance improvements, maybe lower error rates. And the second is less overfitting on source languages. Therefore, we conduct the following experiments. We use ARPA Babel, a multilingual conversational telephone speech corpus in the experiments. For each language, there are two sets of data. One is FLP, full language pack, contains about 40 to 80 hours data per language. And the other is LLP, limited language pack, 
contains only 10 hours data and is also the subset of FLP. Then we use the source and target languages as follows. We use, source, we use Bengali, Tagalog, Zulu, Turkish, Telugu, Lithuanian as source languages used in Metachan. And we use Viennese, Swahili, Tamil, Kumanji as target languages evaluated during meta test. When it comes to validation, to decide which pre-training steps should be picked, we use cross-validation. For example, if we want to adapt on Viennese, we will use Swahili, Tamil, and Kumanji as validation sets, so on and so forth. Okay, so here comes the results. To answer the first question, here is a table of character error rates of FLP for each target language. The lower the value, the better the performance. And each row represents different pre-training setting. For example, no pre-train means random initialization. And this row means we use Bengali, Tagalog, Zulu as pre-training languages. And for each target language, we report the multi-ASR pre-trained and meta-ASR pre-trained initialization in different two columns. And we have the following observations. First, adaptation from meta-ASR performs better than random initialization. You can see that the values inside the orange square is always smaller than the values inside the green square, which means random initialization. Right. And the second is, in each pre-training languages and target language pairs, meta-ASR is always better than multi-ASR. You can see that the values inside orange square is also smaller than the values inside green square, where the green square is the character error rate of multi-ASR pre-trained model. Right. To answer the second question, we need to look at the learning curve. Here I will explain what is the meaning of one point on the learning curve. Um, take this point for example, this point means I pre-trained 20,000 pre-training steps on pre-training languages. Then use the obtained initial parameters to adapt on a target language. And get why here is 56% character error rate on its development sets. Here is the source languages and target language pair and its corresponding learning curve. So, as you can see in this figure, as the pre-training grows, the learning curve of meta-ASR meta pre-training initialization performs better. And the trend is goes down. The error rate trend is goes down. That means the meta-ASR pre-training initialization is less overfitted on the source languages. And we observe the similar trends on different source languages and target language pair. And actually, we observe the similar trends on all source languages and target language pair we conducted in the experiments, but I just list, but I just listed two of them. So in conclusion, uh, from the two metrics mentioned above, we can see that the adaptation using meta learned parameters is beneficial, and such technique can be applied to different applications beyond speech recognition, for example, text to speech or voice conversion, etc. And by the way, we still need to examine on more pre-training languages and target language pairs to prove its robustness. Here is today's presentation. Thank you for your listening. And the following is my contact information. You can scan the QR code to contact me. Thank you.